What is your unpopular movie opinion? That Clifford the Big Red Dog is not big enough. He was still a puppy the whole movie. This is his origin story. Oh god. Why does Clifford the Big Red Dog need an origin story? To establish the children's book cinematic universe. Thomas the Tank Engine will approach Clifford in a bar during the post credits scene to recruit him for the reading initiative. If we don't seal Ever Burton with an eye patch, I'm going to be quite upset. This just became canon. Edit oh my god thanks for the gold. You've made my Monday. I really hate the overuse trope of the protagonist having to drag some anchor of a screaming or defiant annoying kid on a journey, which seems to be very popular in apocalypse type movies. Let the little shit die we all thought this at one point. I really like Terminator Salvation, because it actually had the Terminator robots in it for more than 5 minutes, and not just infiltration robots. I wish the newer movies just continued the story. We already had three movies about time traveling robots. A trilogy based on the actual war against the machines would have been a nice way to tie up the series. Alien Resurrection was a bad horror movie, but definitely a fun action movie. It's got a ton of great actors Ron Perelman, Michael Wincott, Dominique Pion, Brad Dourif, Dan Hedaya. Just a great cast. The visuals are also cool thanks to Jane Peirgeunet's direction. It's a movie of clashing tones and visions. But it's miles better than Alien 3. Watch it as a comedy. I liked Alien vs. Predator. It's about cool aliens hunting each other in an ancient arctic pyramid with explorers getting caught up in it. That movie was as described. Aliens vs. Predators. It was fun. Close Saint I have seen to a movie version of a comic one shot. It is fine vs. movie. Take two monsters. Put them against each other. Have good action scenes. Not every movie needs to have a massively deep plot and subtle commentary about the human psyche. I felt the same about Freddy vs. Jason. Here are these iconic slash of villains. Here are some teenagers to murder. And here they are fighting. What else were you expecting? There's like a 10% chance that Sucker Punch was absolutely genius and a 90% chance that it was just total garbage and I'm reading too much into it. Snedder's films are like an amazing, luminous gift box that contains absolutely nothing. I've never seen A Clockwork Orange, because everyone I know who has been really enthusiastic about it has been a complete asshole. It's a case of misaimed fandom. I'm a huge fan of that movie, but detest the people who idolize the main character. They have 100% missed the point. Just like pretentious Rick Morty fans. This. I'm tired of people who think Rick is cool. He's a ducking mess and pretty evil to boot. They all think they are Ricks, but really they are all Jerry's. Jumper was a dope. Edit forgot the word movie. But somehow this seems to work too. I wish Disney would make cartoons again. And not just Pixar type stuff. Yes I miss the 2D animation. So sick of the new look for every single movie. Pixar should be the 3D line, while Disney should be the classic 2D line. The ending of The Breakfast Club ruined the movie for me. The bully got the girl, the asshole jock got the girl, and the jeep got the SA. League of Extraordinary Gentlemen was a fun movie and I'm disappointed it didn't spawn a whole cinematic universe. Loved this movie. Also disappointed we didn't get more movies. I like John Carter. Reminder sought by controversial to see the real answers. Yep. Every unpopular opinion thread is just filled with popular opinions. I think Avengers is a bit overrated woe chill dude this is too unpopular. Yeah I know what. I'm not gonna lie. But I like Gal Gadot purely for her looks. Ryan Reynolds has been playing the same character in past few years and it's making me dislike him. Do something different become a villain or just someone other than a wise ass. It's so much that I just don't want to see a movie with him in it. Past few years. Not his entire career. To be fair. Ryan has done a lot of movies that are outside his usual playing himself roles. Before he was Deadpool. He had actually done a lot of serious and different roles. These are roles that he played well, but the films weren't exactly successful. I think he's discovered what works for him and is now sticking to it. They aren't serious roles. But definitely, maybe and just friends are two of my favorite movies. Funny, heartwarming, well written. He's fantastic in both. 
He was also great in the voices and the proposal. I haven't seen most of his action movies. So I'll have to check them out. Sex scenes in movies are boring. Uncomfortable to watch, and often unnecessary for the overall plot of the movie. The only movie I've ever seen with a plot critical sex scene is Old Boy. Original Terminator. Waterworld was a great movie. Dr. Ian Malcolm in the Jurassic Park movie was portrayed as a moron. Here's a post I made about it. Link. He had Dennis Nedry level intelligence at best in the movies. It's a complete shame, because he's my favorite character in the book. But the movie did a real piss poor job at portraying him. He ended up sounding like a pseudo intellectual dumbass. Yeah it was pretty misguided. Even still though I love Jurassic Park and I love Goldblum's portrayal of Ian Malcolm. But it's more because of the charisma of Goldblum than anything else. Honestly the movie lost the message entirely, if you think about it. It's not that man can't deal with nature. It's that capitalism and hubris are a winning combination for suffering. A lot of Crichton's books have themes of corporate espionage and sabotage. And that element is kind of glossed over in the movie. I really, really dislike the boy in the striped pajamas and life is beautiful. For the same reason they tell a story that's somewhat interesting and at times emotionally beautiful. But they do so by divorcing the reality of the holocaust from what is portrayed on screen. And yes, there is some personal family history behind my opinions. But even still, I think I'd be hard pressed to like these films simply because of how they undersell the cruelty of the holocaust. The simple truth is that neither of these stories would have been possible in reality because they show a level of mercy that the Nazis did not possess. The boy in the striped pajamas would have never been issued those pajamas. He would have been taken from the train straight to be murdered. Same thing in life is beautiful. Dad wouldn't have had to worry about keeping his kids in good spirits because they would have been taken away from him and immediately murdered. I have a hard time watching any media about the holocaust. But I have an especially hard time with these ones, because so many people love them. And the story they tell, which is of an important historical event, isn't accurate. Certain realities should never be softened for the sake of a story. And the Holocaust is one of those realities. By himself. Will Ferrell isn't that funny, when he's working with someone, or as a character actor he is. But in interviews not so much. A lot of his jokes fall flat. I prefer A New Hope over Empire Strikes Back. Tokyo Drift is my guilty pleasure and is the best of the FF franchise. The Star Wars prequels had a lot of story and a lot of interesting content drowned out by terrible acting possibly due to poor directing. Cause it had good actors in it and that story being poorly told. Lucas, while a solid ideas man, just wasn't the guy to write these movies. We all know the infamous quotes and cringe wire lines. Good movies might have been buried in them, but you have to squint to see them. The Star Wars sequels, meanwhile, were visually solid, good effects and strong acting. They had everything a movie needs to be a competent movie short of an actually good, thought out story. In summary while the prequels were a good story poorly told, the sequels were a terrible story told excellently. For the above reasons I believe both these trilogies were ultimately just not good. And it's kind of pointless to argue whether the prequels or sequels were better. They're fairly opposite in output. But neither one's good. That R ratings gore sex cursing does not equal to better more mature. If anything I'd argue the opposite. Deep Impact is better than Armageddon. Deep Impact is to Armageddon as Tant's Peak is to Volcano. Armageddon and Volcano are the big Hollywood blockbuster spectacles. Whereas Deep Impact and Ants Peak try to portray the science as best as they can. Free Guy is just a live action version of the Lego movie. Bad Boys 2 is not only better than Bad Boys 1. But it's one of the greatest action movies ever made. I've always noticed that most people's favorite Harry Potter movie is Prisoner of Azkaban. And I can't understand that. I think it's personally one of the weakest. I think it's because of the overall deep change of aesthetics. The fact that Alfonso Cuaron was the new director made it interesting. He tried some new stuff and it was a darker film in general as the kids were growing up and becoming teenagers. Also the sound design was improved in my opinion like the sound of the spells being cast by wands. 
It had thriller and horror movie vibes to it especially with the dark soundtrack at the end in that abandoned house. Where you can hear some ducking creepy harpsichord playing. People like to be scared watching a movie die personally really enjoy it for all the reasons above. I loved Tenet. I've watched it multiple times and enjoyed it just as much each time. Avengers aren't as great as people think. It's the same shit over and over, but with different villains and more city-wide damage. As a Marvel fan, yeah you're not wrong XD. What I like most about the series is how literally all the other Marvel movies come together to build up the main storyline. If it wasn't for the introduction, Up would not be that good. It did not deserve its nomination for Best Picture at the Oscars. There is nothing notable about it except for the introduction. Movies are dying, and it's all about TV shows now. The dirt on the lens scene in Children of Men isn't immersive. It's distracting and reminds me that I'm watching the action through a sheet of glass. The Village by M. Night Shyamalan is a great movie with poor marketing. Joker was pretentious. Most people are too critical about movies and need to just relax. Stop overanalyzing something like a snobby film student and just enjoy the ride. Like especially with children or family movies I'll see film channels that will take the most family friendly fun little movies and overanalyze every little plot hole. Or do some ridiculous deep dive character exploration into what is clearly meant to just be a light hearted comedy film that doesn't take itself too seriously. Movies haven't gotten worse people have just developed this culture of overanalyzing everything and essentially looking for reasons to hate anything. Would you throw away a Ferrari just because it had a small scratch on the seat probably not so why would you throw away a fun wholesome movie just because of some ridiculous little problems that don't even matter especially when you consider the goal of the movie. Star Wars 1, 3 have the better story compared to 4, 6. It's not as well executed. But if you would read both, I'd prefer the first one. Movie trailers show way too much of the movie. In the immortal words of Peter Griffin, I did not care for The Godfather. You shouldn't make a cliffhanger at the end of your movie, even if you plan to make more movies or a sequel, because you'll look like an idiot when it gets discontinued. Juno was bad and her character was annoying. And I feel like I was the exact kind of hipster teenage girl they were trying to pander to. I have an actual unpopular opinion sure the opinion comic book movies are boring as soon as unpopulars. Hannibal Lecter is the worst part of Silence of the Lambs. He is a cartoonish villain that is so over the top. He became comedic. Meanwhile, Buffalo Bill was terrifyingly real. The night vision scene between him and Clarice is horrifying. The Shining is overrated. People are starting to respond to this comment and let me just say. I like The Shining. I just think it doesn't deserve to be on pretty much every top 10 best movies list. Black Panther was a mediocre movie at best. Kubrick made a lot of shit movies by refusing to read the entire book and then making up his own bullshit. And it's horrible because not only is it a crap adaptation, it also ruins people's views of the story. They are pretty and cinematographically nice, but they are empty shells of the actual story. He turned a clockwork orange into a gory torture porn fest without any real meaning, by ignoring the last chapter of the book, by making the girl in La a sexy 15 year old instead of an innocent 12 year old he completely ducked up the entire premise, by turning the main character into a victim of jailbait in the eyes of the movie Jesus Christ people instead of a ducked up nonce. For example. Also apparently he ducked up the shining real bad too I can't really talk there as I haven't seen it though. Edit I cannot stress enough how much the original book does to show Hubert as a perverse monster who thinks a 12 year old is a femme fatale. How jarring the contrast between the actual girl and his image of her is. How other characters act while he's waxing lyrical about her. That sort of thing. What Kubrick did in comparison is sympathetic. He made his fantasy much closer to reality and removed that sickening juxtaposition. Batman Begins is the best Nolan Batman movie. I think that classic horror slashers are pretty cringe. They still have a nostalgic quality of course, but I think nostalgia is the main reason people still like them as opposed to them actually being good films. 
I much prefer the artistic and psychological ventures the horror genre is taking more recently with movies from directors like Kerry Astor, Jennifer Kent, Robert Eggers, Rose Glass. I think the slasher subgenre could even be better now than it was in its conception, because the horror genre as a whole is more refined and has more niches. But the classic films really just make me cringe.